Uh, hi, everyone. Um, one thing I did not tell Ken yesterday is that uh, yesterday was my 14-year wedding anniversary. Um, <laughs> I bet he got cookies. <laughs> Um, so I got to give a huge shout out um, to dad who is uh, holding down the front this week uh, with the kids. So if you'll ask my kids what I do, um, I work on a computer and I bake cookies. Um, <laughs> so I'm a software architect at Vibrant Credit Union uh, where I'm building the mobile app for the Vibrant Coffee House and Kitchen. So if you're ever in Des Moines, uh, Iowa or Moline, Illinois, stop by and see us and grab a cup of coffee. So as much as I'd like to say I'm retiring, I mean, I'm tired, um, aren't we all? Um, I still have 30 years left. App Center, on the other hand, has only six months. Um, if you haven't heard the announcement, uh, Microsoft um, made the announcement earlier this year that App Center will be retiring in March of 2025. Um, App Center, for those of you who might not have used it or don't know what it is, is a cloud-based platform that combines a lot of the services that we as mobile developers use into uh, one space. Uh, that includes building your mobile apps, testing them, distributing them, uh, code push, so that you don't have to deal with those pesky app stores, um, as well as uh, analytics and diagnostics. Now, um, we don't really know why Microsoft decided to retire it. Um, some guy named Jamin, I think some of you might know him, uh, wrote a blog post a couple of months ago where his theory was that um, App Center, uh, a lot of the services that it provided were free for all of us. Uh, and that just was not a very sustainable business model. Um, now, luckily, even though it is retiring, there are a lot of um, options out there uh, from uh, Expo, uh, Application Services, Circle CI. Uh, and there are actually two sponsors here today that do offer DevOps for mobile, uh, mobile apps, uh, Runway and Tramline. So if you haven't stopped by their booth, make sure you stop by and talk to them. But today, uh, this is gonna be the star of our show. So GitHub Actions is a continuous integration and delivery tool uh, that allows you to build and deploy your mobile applications. It's composed of workflows, which are um, automated processes that are built in YAML. Um, and are located in a special or special di uh, directory <laughs> in your GitHub repository. Uh, when you're building workflows, there are three main things that you need to do. Uh, you need to define when, uh, what, and where. When is, when do you want this workflow to run? Those are your events and those are your triggers. Do you want it to run when you push to main? Do you want it to run uh, when you open a pull request? Uh, you can also trigger it to run, um, you can also trigger it to run manually or on a schedule. You also have to define what. What do you want that workflow to do? Those are your jobs um, and they're composed of steps. Those steps are essentially the things that the workflow is going to go ahead and run. Those can be actions that are pre-built uh, pre or you can write your own scripts. Where um, is where those actions are gonna run. So uh, those are your runners, uh, and those are virtual machines that uh, go through your steps of your jobs and run those uh, on there. There are two options for runners. Um, GitHub has uh, GitHub hosted runners. Uh, you've got the, your Ubuntu flavor, your Windows, as well as your Mac OS. But if those don't fit your needs, you can also use a self-hosted runner. Um, so I'm going to be showing uh, the Android and iOS uh, workflow, but before I do that, because we're going to be showing some of the app signing process as part of that, and I don't have enough time to kind of throw that, go through that app signing process, uh, Cecilia Martinez gave a fantastic talk last year on uh, signed, sealed, uh, deployed, where she talks a little bit more about that app signing um, and provisioning process for both Apple and Android. So make sure you check it out, uh, just not right now. <laughs> Whoops. Is that big enough for everyone? <laughs> so uh, in here I have a YAML file uh, that uh, defines an on. So this on up here um, is my trigger. When do I want this workflow to run? In this case, I want it to run every time I push to main uh, because it is gonna be a release build. Uh, I can also trigger it manually, and that's what that workflow dispatch is. For my jobs, 
Um, I have two jobs in this workflow, the first being build and deploy Android, and the second, which we'll see here in a minute, is build and deploy iOS. Um, first thing I define is what do I want to run it on? In this case, I want an Ubuntu, uh, an Ubuntu latest. There are a few other versions of it that you can use, but it comes pre-installed with certain tools uh, and certain software so that you can kind of hit the ground running. If there are other things that you need to set up on there, um, you can use actions. In this case, I'm checking out my repository. Uh, I'm setting up Node, I'm setting up Java, and making sure that my environment has all the tools that it needs to be able to bundle that Android app. So once we've set up all that stuff, uh, ran npm install, the next section is where we uh, bundle that uh, AAB or APK. In order to sign it, we need to decode the key store. Um, so a lot of these things are stored in secrets. If you are using GitHub Actions, I highly recommend that you use the GitHub Actions extension, which allows you to see uh, your workflow runs as well as manage your secrets and repository variables. Otherwise, you'd have to do it in the GitHub UI on the web, and it's usable, um, just a little bit clunky. Um, so we decode the key store. Uh, now that it's on that virtual machine, we can then go ahead and use some of those uh, variables from that key store in order to bundle a release version of our APK, or in this case, uh, AAB. Uh, luckily for Android, that process is really simple. You just need to uh, called bundle release, and it will do all that for you. Um, and then what we do next is that we upload this artifact to two places. Uh, upload artifact, we'll upload it straight to GitHub. And so when you see your workflow build, what it will do is it will uh, save it as an artifact for you to be able to download on your machine if you need to. The other thing that uh, we do is that we upload it to the Google Play console directly. Now, luckily there is an action out there uh, that somebody built that we can use. Uh, the only two things that you need to provide it um, are your service account JSON, um, and then you also need what track you want to deploy this to. You can do internal uh, for internal testing, alpha and beta for open and closed testing in the Google Play Store. Um, and there you have it. That is the Android uh, piece of it. Next is um, iOS. The process for iOS is the very similar to Android. You'll notice one of, the, one of the first differences is that we run it on a Mac OS uh, runner. Um, one thing I wanted to point out with Mac OS is that uh, with Apple, you are required to build your apps on Xcode 15. Uh, but up until this week, the Mac OS runners did not have Xcode 15 on there by default. And so that step of setting up uh, Xcode to version 15 was needed. But as of Monday, it looks like the Mac OS 13 uh, image already has Xcode 15 on there by default. And then come next Monday, uh, that will be on the Mac OS 14 runner. So if you're using either of those runners, um, you should be able to not need to set up Xcode 15 on there. Um, again, similar to Android, you set up your environment with all the things that you need, your Cocoa Pods, um, you install your pods and all that stuff. Now here's where it gets a little bit, uh, whoops. So I had to zoom out because it's very long. <laughs> but you'll notice that compared to, um, compared to Android, iOS is a little bit more lengthy. Um, there are two ways to do it. You can use an action that's already in GitHub uh, Actions Marketplace, or you can do it yourself. Uh, this one is copied directly from the GitHub documentation, uh, so you know it's good. Um, again, you plug in a couple of uh, secrets, which are defined in your repository secrets. Those are your build certificate, your provisioning profile, uh, your keychain password, um, and things like that. So once you've installed all those, um, all those things on that virtual machine, you archive your iOS app and you do that with Xcode build archive. And then you export that IPA um, using Xcode build archive. Um, and then you upload it. I do the same thing here where I upload it straight to the GitHub Actions uh, result. And then I uh, upload it to TestFlight. In order to upload to TestFlight, you need a, uh, an API key that allows you to uh, 
upload to test flight. But then once you have that, you can just run um, X run alt tool upload app, and that will um, send it straight to test flight. So some of the nice things about using GitHub Actions is that it's, um, it's built into GitHub. So if your repository um, lives in GitHub, then using GitHub Actions is kind of a uh, no-brainer. It offers a lot of flexibility and customizations. Um, so if you have workflows that need uh, special things uh, that are not provided out of the box by some of the other services, you can kind of go in there and customize it uh, the way that you want it. Their documentation is fantastic. Um, it's very comprehensive. Uh, and if there's anything that you can't find in the documentation, there are a lot of people on Stack Overflow and Reddit who will happily help you <laughs> or not help you, um, depending on how you ask your question. <laughs> um, and there are a lot of um, actions in the actions marketplace. Um, it has things for all sorts of uh, languages, not just iOS and Android specific. Um, so if you're ever looking for something before you build it, try the marketplace, and if it's not there, uh, then you can go ahead and build it. So with everything that, um, <laughs> even though it does have all of its advantages, um, there are some downsides too. Uh, raise your hand if you've been personally victimized by CI, CD, yep. <laughs> So we all know how painful those could be. Um, this is just kind of a short example of what a lot of the commit logs uh, look like if you're working on a CI CD pipeline. Uh, mine is 10 times worse than that, <laughs> but we're not gonna tell anybody. Um, so some of the things or some of the challenges that you can encounter with using GitHub Actions is learning curve. Um, YAML is kind of like one of those uh, dirty words where people really, really hate it. Um, <laughs> so if you don't like YAML, um, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of maintenance involved in it. Um, so because you are writing all of these things yourself, you need to make sure that uh, if you are using an action, you need to be using uh, you know, the newest version of an action, or if something breaks, you not to need to kind of go in there and fix it. Uh, and with those par third-party actions, um, there's always the worry of security and reliability. We kind of depend on those maintainers to maintain uh, those actions. Um, otherwise, you could get things like build warnings for things like deprecated node versions that are being used in some of those actions. Um, or worst case scenario, you could get uh, build failures that you'd have to go in and try to figure out. Um, but that is all I have for you guys today. Thank you for being here. Um, thank you to the team at Infinite Red for having me here um, and putting on an amazing conference. If you want to talk about GitHub Actions, cookies, and all things baking, um, I'd be happy to talk to you guys afterwards. All right, thank you. Thank you.